Okay, so for this project, we're going to need an old rasp. So let's go and raid my store, see what we can come up with. See if we can find a, a nasty old one. The trouble is, most of these have still got a decent edge on them, even though they started to go a bit rusty. They're still, yeah, see that one's pretty sharp. Let's see if I can find a slightly worse one. I think that one's probably had it a bit. So, Let's light the fire up and crack straight on. Now, as is normal with most of my projects that I put on YouTube, I've never done this before. I came across the idea on my Instagram feed. It came up. It was done by a guy called Reforged Relics. If you haven't or don't know of him, go and have a look. I'll put the link in the description somewhere. He's got some really cracking stuff on his Instagram site. So thanks to him for giving me the inspiration. As I say, never done it, so we're going to have a crack at it together and see how we get on. It looks fairly straightforward, but then a lot of these things that look straightforward often aren't. Let's find us a decent hammer. Go for my favourite, if I can find it. There we go, a little cross pane. I like this hammer. Use it for all sorts. I'm getting a bit more time now I'm in my new shop. Um, I've still got plenty of work but I'm able to sort of do more than one project at a time because I've got the space so it's uh, helping out a lot. I'm really enjoying it. I want to sort of turn this round in a sort of a spiral. Um, a bit like the inside of a, a kitchen roll tube or kitchen roll, the tube inside that's got that spiral look to it, the way it's formed. That's what I'm aiming for and at the moment I'm not making a very good fist of it. There must be an easier way of doing it and I dare say over time I'll find it but I say with my first attempt I'm just going with my instinct at the moment which probably isn't serving me very well. been really hot the last few days here and uh, my new place is really rather cool um, they re-roofed it for me before I moved in and I don't know if it, it's that that's doing it because it's really well insulated and it's brick all brick built but it's I can work in there on the forge quite happily don't work up too much of a sweat at all which is going to be a bonus this summer what it'll be like in the winter I don't know but we'll soon see Right, see I'm not <laughs> doing all that well, but it's it's getting there. I'm getting the, the general idea. I'm just sort of hitting the one edge to try and push it over in a spiral fashion. What you want to try and do is get the edges to butt along each other and not overlap. Don't worry if it's sort of quite big at the moment because that will be um, reduced quite drastically later on. You can work on that. Once you've got the basic shape in the right direction, you can do what I'm doing there. Just keep going, hammering round and round and it, it, it reduces the size of it. Quite sure how much I'm going to need. I don't want to have too big a handle, but then I don't want to have too small a handle. And it looks fairly big at the moment, but once I reduce it in diameter, it might look not quite as much. Yeah, I think we're getting there. Yeah, 
you can de definitely see where we're going now with this one. You can already see how it's reducing in size or in diameter. Not sure if I should have taken that tang off. It's left a bit of a nasty hole. I think I probably should have taken it off, but hey ho, I'll know for next time. You want, that's what I was aiming for, to keep those joins nice and tight together, but not overlapping. Now, I'm going to get rid of that angle, make it straight. Keen eyed of you will see my deliberate mistake. I've already straightened it, but I forgot to put the camera back on. All I did was basically laid it on the anvil and hit it. Um, you'll see me do it again in a minute because it doing this shaping or reducing um, puts it out of square again. So I'll just give it a quick belt down on the anvil again, which is basically what I did the first time. I'm trying to keep the handle up the middle or the blade up the middle of the handle, whichever way you look at it. I want to put a bit of shape into the handle as well. That's why I'm using the beak there. Just to sort of try and get some shape in the bottom of it. I don't want the handle just to be a straight piece of iron. I'd like to get some... There you go, that's what I did before. So, it's pretty straight now, but I want to, as I say, get some shape into it. So I'm going to try and it's difficult because it's I don't want it round either I'm going to try and flatten it a bit so that it's more oval because um, I think that will feel better in the hand rather than a, a cylindrical thing if it's oval you can really feel whether it's more upright when you it's sort of a bit easier to to keep upright if it's oval or if it's round you can have it in almost any direction it's not easy to keep upright um, I know I'm waffling. This tang is really bugging me as well. I'm going to leave it for now and keep trying to work it in. But I really think I should have taken it off because I really don't like that hole it's left. I think if I'd taken that off I could have done away with that hole there. As I say, it's a learning curve. See how quickly it cools down as well. Swap hammers. Try a little, a smaller cross pane. Don't know if it'd be any good, but we'll give it a go. Just try and titivate this at this end, which is bugging me. It's not really going where I want it to go, that tang. But I think I'm going to leave it and just make the best of a bad job. And say it was a design feature. Try and round it off a bit so it sort of closes up at the end. Maybe. Mm, yeah, well, it's sort of getting there, I think. Right, so now I'm going to try and put a little bit more shape in the handle, sort of width-wise and bend-wise and just generally get it a bit more fitting in the hand. I really must redesign my 
rasp tongs. I've got a pair of tongs that are specifically designed for holding rasps. They've got like a piece sticking up either side of them to hold the, the rasp completely still. But they're for the old rasps, which were only about, I don't know what they were, about 45 mil wide or 40 mil wide. And these are nearer two inch wide, 50 mil. So they don't fit. So I'm going to have to adjust them or make a new pair. Because although these tongs I'm using are pretty good, they don't hold it particularly well. So there's another job for me to do. Still not happy with that little end. Flattening it off a bit, trying to make it a bit more oval. Keeping it moving so I don't get too many flats on the back of it underneath. I'll keep it up the middle. All these things you've got to think about whilst you're fiddling. It's much easier to straighten something that's gone a little bit out of skew than it is to straighten something that's gone way out of whack. So you can always give it a little tink tickle, straighten it up. There you go, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to cool it out and try it just so I can see if, if we're on the right stretch. Right, cool, quickly cooled it out. And I'm quite happy with that shape. Ow, that end's hot. <laughs> I didn't call that end out. Um, but yeah, I quite like it. I could have cut that tang off because there's plenty of handle. I like the shape. Feels nice. So we'll give it a go at that, I think. We'll probably leave the handle now and just concentrate on the blade. I want it quite a long, thin blade. I might have to cut some off it, I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it goes when I'm forging it. And as I say, I'm not happy with that, but hey ho, I'm going to leave it. If I'd cut it off, I could have forged that in, I think. But there you go, never mind. Alright, so now we're going to start big guns give my poor old shoulder a workout see how it's doing this is seven months post-op and I'm not doing too bad virtually all of the pain has gone I get the odd twinge I just haven't got the strength yet back and see some of my blows <coughs> excuse me some of my blows are a little bit wayward but I'm working on it and it's as I say I can work doesn't hurt me. Now I'm realising how bad my left one is. Now the, the right one is, is getting that much better. So I think eventually I'm going to have to have that done. So I'm just going to try and thin this blade down instead of having to cut it. I always like to forge my blades rather than cut and grind. Obviously I've got to do a lot of grinding but I like to try and do as much forging as I can. Just somehow feel it's, I don't know, when it's just cut and ground, I feel it's sort of somewhat cheating, almost. You haven't really put the shape into it yourself with your sweat. You've just cut it. But that's just me. Obviously takes a lot longer to forge it, but as always, these, this my knives aren't for sale, they're just for me, for my own entertainment. 
the this one I'm actually anticipating using in the kitchen. I made another kitchen knife. You, I'll probably put the link to the video up in the corner somewhere. But uh, I use it all the time. It's a big cutting knife. I use it for all sorts of things. It's really sharp. I cut bread with it. I cut vegetables with it. Cut meat with it. Cut everything. And this one I'm just hoping will be just a little bit finer. A little bit lighter. A little bit more of an all-rounder, I think. So I think I might have to shorten that a little bit because it's getting quite long and we're not anywhere near finished so I might just have to cut a little bit off it and see how it goes. Now I just want to get rid of that line so I'm just going to set it down. I suppose ideally I should have, you can see that, I suppose I should have cut that really but I don't suppose it matters either way you're going to get a a join or a line. Um, this way was just I found easier. We're getting there. Yeah, it's going to be way too long. I'm going to have to cut some of that off. I don't know if Mr. Clarkson's watching, but there's one of his. Hawkstone Lager boxes. I ordered a case the other day. Very nice it is too. A little bit hoppy. More like a beer than a lager, but uh, very refreshing. Thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Right, that's much better. I'm going to um, be happier with that, I think. We'll forge that down. Yeah, that's better. That's what I was aiming for. Not a fine tuning. Again, trying to keep it straight, and that is just about it. I think I'm going to call it a day at that and hit the grinder. I like that. I like the proportions, handle to blade. Now I've got a 40 grit ceramic belt on there. I'm just going to define the shape first. both top and bottom. I like these ceramic belts, they last so much longer than the zirconium or whatever they are. A little bit more expensive obviously but same old story, you get what you pay for. Probably just about do it. We can start on the. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that and we can start on the bevel. I'm going to get my um, bevel grinding jig, but I don't know if it's going to work very well because I haven't got a tang. I've got nothing to hold it by, so I'm relying solely on the magnets. My jig has got magnets um, embedded in it in the face. I'm hoping they're going to be strong enough to hold it. So far so good. I'm going quite gently. Turn it round. See how that goes. It's not holding very well that way around so I'm going to have to sort of support it. So that was that, now I'm just going to give it a, a sort of a buff up. This is um, like a, almost like a Scotch Bright wheel, but it's not, it's a, 
it's a Chinese version, um, but they work really well. I buy them sort of half a dozen at a time because they take a while to get here. And they're uh, 180 grit, but I use them for all sorts. I use them for buffing, well, everything, buffing stuff. And it leaves a nice sort of satin finish. This is the same one, just a bit bigger, so I can get around it a bit better. Um, there you go. I've just given it all a quick go over. Obviously, this is all pre heat treat. There's no point going too wild before I heat treat it. I'm happy with that. I like that. The bevel's a slightly bigger one side than the other, but hey ho, it's only for me. Quite happy with the handle. It's rustic, but it's. It's nice, it fits in the hand nicely. It's almost straight that blade. Not quite down the centre, but again, hey ho, it's only for me. So I'm gonna try and get this hot. I'm putting it in spine first, because I found if I lay the blade down, it does tend to bevel it, or bow it. So I'm holding it spine down, the heat penetrates up from the top. Let's give that a clean up. Got the excess oil off, and you can see the crack that comes out of that old oil. And it's it has bowed a little bit, but not a lot. A little bit up there, worse than it was. Although that edge isn't too bad. So hey ho, let's give it a, another clean up before I take it home and give it a temper. Hello Ralph, he's enjoying the new workshop, he's got freedom to roam, he's loving it. Again I'm just taking the, the black scale and the crud that's come out the oil off, getting it up to a slightly better finish than I did before, but only because that's going to be about the last sort of finish until I've done the heat treat. Alright, here we go. So, that's about it. We'll get it home, get it tempered, and then we'll take it from there. Right, so I'm home, early finish today. I've got the oven on and it's up to temperature. Let's get it in. I'm doing it at um, about 4.20 I think it's at. And I'm gonna do that for a couple of hours. And I'm aiming for sort of a brown to blue Let's see what we've got two hours later. We've got the brown, uh, the blue, sorry, with a little bit of brown in it. The blade's sort of the bluey, and the handle's more the, the browny. But that's what I was aiming for. So it's pretty much spot on. Now we're back at the workshop. I was going to clean this up with that Scotch Bright wheel, but I rather like the colours. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it and just put an edge on it and then let it patina on its own, you know, with with use. That'll it'll clean up, it'll scuff. If it gets too scuffed, I'll bring it in and clean it. But I, I really rather like those colours. So I'll clean it up, put an edge on it and then oil it and take it home and use it. I've got my cheap old... Uh, knife sharpener here, brought that in with me, so we're going to give that a go, see if we can put an edge on it. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I never make my blades razor sharp, can't see the point really because they go off razor sharp so quickly and you've got to keep doing them so I get them to a 
a reasonable sharp, a usable sharpness, put it that way, that you don't have to keep uh, touching up every five minutes. So, I don't know if you can see the edge, you can just see it glinting there, but it's put on it. And as I say, it's not razor, but it's good enough for me. I'll do the paper cutting, but it's not, and say, it's not brilliant. If I can get it to start. That's sharp enough for me. If it'll cut a bit of paper. I'm sure it'll cut a loaf of bread and a bit of meat. So, yeah, good enough for me. So what I'm going to do now um, is, like I say, just give it some oil. I oil all of my um, knives that I use at home that I've made, um, basically because if you don't, this this steel goes rusty pretty quickly. Uh, I don't put them in a dishwasher. What I tend to do, I use this tongue oil, and what I tend to do is once I've used it for whatever, I just give it a quick wash in the sink and dry it instantly off, hand dry it and stick it back in the drawer. And then every once in a while, re-oil it. This stuff dries, not sticky. It, it's, it is food grade sort of oil. You can use it on kitchen knives, on handles, on blocks, wooden blocks, wooden spoons, um, salad bowls, that type of thing. It's, it's perfectly food safe. Um, and so it dries to a non-sticky finish. I'll leave this to dry and rub off any excess, if there is any. As I say, just once in a while, give it a touch up. There you go. It ain't a showroom exhibit but it's what I wanted. It's basically proof of concept. Doing the, the, the blade part of it isn't the, isn't the point, it's the, uh, the handle. I've proved it can be done and I can do it and I've made a useful little knife for home. So thanks for watching and hopefully we'll catch you on another one.